Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Alex Orell claims his ex-girlfriend moved out suddenly, leaving him to pay her half of the bills. Brittany Gaines says she may have left him high and dry, but it's because he left her with an STI. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. This is the case of Orell versus Gaines. Mr. Orell, you are suing Ms. Gaines for $6,285 for lease payments. You say she owes you, correct? Yes, that is correct. And Ms. Gaines, you say the living situation was dysfunctional. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Orell, please explain. Your Honor, we're here today because uh, the defendant, my ex, Mrs. Gaines and I, we shared an apartment. She kind of left me high and dry with the utilities and the bills after an agreement. All right, so you agreed that she would pay what when she moved in? It would be half of the rent and utilities, and that is actually something that I have evidence of. Oh, I'd like to see that. Okay. So, Ms. Gaines, you said you'd pay half the rent and half the utilities? Yes, Your Honor. For how long? For six months while I was residing with the plaintiff. All right, I see the text exchange where it says, oh, yeah, I'd love to. I can help with rent and stuff. You say that. He says, great, we can just split rent and utilities 50-50. You agree, perfect. Then what happens? I start to get the sense that maybe he's cheating again. It actually all started with a Fitbit, Your Honor. How did it start? A Fitbit started it? Yes. Explain. He's a workout junkie, and he wanted me to work out more with him. Um, so he decided that we should probably sync up our Fitbits so that we get live updates. And he said he would send me uplifting messages whenever I, you know, was working out. But That's what he didn't he mention is that he was also going to send yeah. disparaging messages when I wasn't. But, Your Honor, this was all an excuse for him to try and get me to lose weight. That's how you see it. So how do you see it, Mr. Orell? Uh, I see it that we both obviously motivate one another like uh, a partnership, and this would give us more of an insight on how the other person's doing, and it would do nothing but push one another. It's, it's nothing so about no control. So did it work? No could you get in shape? I was seeing weird updates from his Fitbit. So at like 10 p.m. on a Saturday, he's supposed to be out with the boys playing poker or whatever, and I get a notification that he's working out. I decide that I want to know where he's going. Mm -hmm. So he's I put an air tag her. in his trunk to see if he was actually going to the gym. And what did you find out with the air tag? Well, over the course of the next two weeks, he was going to the same exact place every time I got a workout notification. A random residence in Sherman Oaks that I did not recognize. Yeah, now you're a, a, a professional private investigator. So what were you doing, Mr. Orell? Um, actually, I was on my own time. I was going out and hanging out with friends, uh, just enjoying myself whenever I could. You just I wanted could. to explore Sherman Oaks, that one area, for two weeks. There, there was plenty of other areas that I went, you know. We're not disclosing, you know, all the information that uh, everywhere I went, you know, I didn't just go hang out in Sherman Oaks, that's for sure. All right, so you were an investigator, and what else did you do, Miss Investigator? Well, Your Honor, I did a good job at investigating, actually. I do have evidence of the text messages aligning with the Fitbit notification. May I see them? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'd like to see them. You will also see evidence of a medical bill that I recently received. Um, during this time, while I was suspect of Alex's whereabouts, I also began to notice symptoms of an STI, and I went to the doctor, and despite being in a monogamous relationship, I did test positive yeah, for monogamous gonorrhea. monogamous relationship where you actually slept with my friends, so who knows where you got it? It's not like you can prove that you got it from wait, me. Wait, wait, hold on, Mr. Orell, don't talk so fast. You said she slept with your friend? 
Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I have somebody that's willing to testify on my behalf. I have a friend here that, you know, can vouch for me. I'd like to hear from your witness, sir. Please stand. You've previously been sworn in. State your name for the court. Hi, my name is uh, Rob Hubbard. Mr. Hubbard, what do you know about this situation between Mr. Orell and Ms. Gaines? He says that she was sleeping with a friend of his. Is that friend you? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Brittany and I, we actually, we did have a thing, you know, one time. Um, she told me that she was upset at, at Alex for stepping out. And at the time, my girlfriend had just cheated on me, so I kind of wanted to wait to get revenge. Coming up. You can look through her medical records and see negative, 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 well, negative. I'm, I'm showing no sorts of signs of having any, any sort of STI, so uh, I, I... Have you been tested? No, ma'am. <laughs> And later, a friend of mine, or it looked like a friend of mine on Facebook, sent me a link about, he said that he had the new Avatar movie, and I clicked on it, and then my computer went completely black. Closed captioning provided by, if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Alex Orell and his ex-girlfriend, Brittany Gaines, over shared living expenses. Ms. Gaines, is Mr. Hubbard telling the truth? Mm -hmm. I did sleep with him three years ago during a very rocky point in my relationship with Alex, a point in which he was also cheating. This didn't happen during the window of time that you say you contracted the STI. No, ma'am. And I have evidence as well of all of my medical history from the past five years to prove that I did not contract gonorrhea until this year. So is it true, Mr. Hubbard, that the only time you slept with Ms. Gaines was three years ago? Yes, Your Honor. Sit down, then, because... <laughs> Now, he just said this was three years ago. You can look through her medical records and see negative, 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 well, negative. I'm, I'm showing no sorts of signs of having any, any sort of STI, so uh, I, I... Have you been tested? No, ma'am. <laughs> I actually have someone I think could speak to this problem of uh, testing positively while asymptomatic, if you'd allow me to bring out a witness. Oh, you have a witness? I do. All right. Uh, Sean, will you please escort... Ms. Gaines, witness into the courtroom. Seriously. You've been sworn in. State your name for the record. Ashley Brinks, Your Honor. Ms. Brinks, uh, please tell me who you are and how you know Ms. Gaines and Mr. Orell or Mr. Orell. Yes, Your Honor, I'm here today to clear my conscience. I was in a sexual relationship with the plaintiff. Oh! <laughs> a relationship I would have never been involved in had I known there was another woman. I was not aware of this until the defendant, Brittany, came to my apartment. I have never seen this woman before. And she informed me that she was Alex's live-in girlfriend of five years. And she also informed me of her positive diagnosis. It looks like the air tag tracked some very interesting information, mm -hmm. which in Sherman Oaks, <laughs> and now you've been found out. Uh, we're actually here because of money. We're not here to air out our dirty laundry, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but you brought a whole human being to testify about the fact that he slept with your girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, mm -hmm. and then he ended up saying three years ago. Plead the fifth. But now you don't want to talk about this. All right. That's why I run this court and you don't. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Briggs, <laughs> once Ms. Gaines informed you she had tested positive for an STI, did you also get tested? Yes, at that point I had shown no signs or symptoms of an STI, so I'm very appreciative that she came to my apartment because I probably never would have known because I doubt Alex would have told me. Um, I made an appointment with my gyno and a week later I also received a positive diagnosis. Ms. Gaines, so you're saying you were living together and once you found that out, what happened? Well, once I had the screenshots of his location, the Fitbit notifications, as well as the gonorrhea test, I decided to confront him. What did you do at that point? 
I said, bye, I was done. I said, no more sacrificing my emotional or physical health for this man, and I left. All right, and so you left. Now, Mr. Uh, Orell, you're suing her for $6,285 mm -hmm. because you say she ran and then she didn't pay the rent. Right, she left me kind of high and dry, didn't give me any How notice. How much was the rent every month? Uh, it was $1,500 a month, three months, and then there's also utilities, gas, electric. I'm not gonna even include the internet. Uh, I'm not gonna be petty about that, but I'm just saying it rounds off to around $6,200. All right, so she ran off mm -hmm. after you gave her an STI and never even and got tested yourself. There's no, there's but no she ran off and you all had an agreement uh -huh. that she was gonna pay half of the rent in the utilities. And not only verbally, it was also done through text. And how many months is this that she left and, and did not pay? Three months. Three months? Right. All right. You, in writing, agreed to split the rent half and half. Do you understand? I do. You also said you'd split the utilities half and half. Right? Yes, Your Honor. So now we get to the point where you've made a separate agreement with Mr. Orell. At the time that you wanted to then move on from that, you probably needed to negotiate with him. Hey, I want to move out. Yeah. Let's work this out. I want to break up. I don't want to be responsible for this anymore because I don't want to be with you. While you agreed to say, yes, I'll pay half of the rent and half of the utilities, there is no specified amount of time. And that's problematic to this court. I do not think, Mr. Orell, you were specific enough in terms of this, you should come on and stay with me since we're together. It's closer to your work and it's closer to this. Well, now you're not together. That's right. So she doesn't need to stay with you. And she's not on the lease. For that reason, I'm gonna allow you one month's rent, which I think she should have given you a 30 day notice. Okay that she was going to be leaving, and the utilities associated with that, judgment for the plaintiff for $1,750. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $1,750. I feel if, as if justice has been served today. You don't trust your man, trust your Definition gut. Get tested. Coming up. He was clicking on something, and I happened to be in the kitchen. I looked over the counter. I said, don't do that. That's malware. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Rachel Pierce claims she got malware on her computer because her tenant clicks on risky links over her Wi-Fi. Andy Butler says he got the link from a friend and didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Good day, everyone. Good day. Yeah. This is the case of Pierce versus Butler. Ms. Pierce, you are suing Mr. Butler for $540 for loss of pay you uh, experienced when he downloaded a virus. Yes, is that Honor. correct? Yes, Your Honor. And the defendant, correct. Mr. Butler, says he's not responsible and you lost money too. Yes, Your Honor. All right, what kind of virus did he download, Ms. Pierce? It's a malware virus where it takes over everything in your computer Ugh. and you lose everything that's there. It's 99% effective where you can't even use a computer. Oh, my goodness. So uh, why was Mr. Butler using your internet? Mr. Butler is a tenant of, of mine. Okay. My husband and I, um, found a house that we really liked, and so we decided to rent it out so that we could have more income in the family. Uh, and how did you uh, meet Mr. Butler, and how did he come to be your tenant? Well, um, Mr. Butler answered an ad that my husband and I put in Zillow. Both of us are educators. He does online schooling as well. So we just felt like he had a mixture. He has a daughter and a granddaughter that live close to us and how this was a perfect neighborhood. So it was a good mix. So this worked for you, Mr. Butler, in your life. And how long were you living there before this download issue happened? I had been there for at least uh, like one year. All right, one year. And do you have a written lease? We do have a written lease. Did Your you Honor. bring a copy of that to court today? I did not bring a copy of the lease. Um, Mr. Butler and I had copies together. He signed one, I signed one. Coming up. Well, I'm not very computer savvy and- Well, we can tell that. Okay. But don't feel bad because I'm not either. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. 
We're back with the case of Rachel Pierce, who brought her tenant Andy Butler to court for downloading malware. In this lease, is there, what are the responsibilities for the tenant? What is the tenant responsible for? He's responsible for paying his rent before Just the fifth rent, of the month. Just rent, any utilities? Um, he does pay some utilities. They're split between us, like the internet. Um, the Wi-Fi. So you all split the internet costs? Yes, we do. That is correct. Evenly? Evenly. So at the point that you decided to download this, what was it, an app or a, a, a website? What was it? Uh, the, it was a, a friend of mine, or it looked like a friend of mine on Facebook, sent me a link about, he said that he had the new Avatar movie, and would I like to watch it? And I said, sure, and I clicked on it, and then my computer went completely black. Ugh. Well, Your yeah. Honor, I'm sorry, but that's not what uh, Mr. Butler told me. Um, what happened was this wasn't the first incident. It wasn't the second incident. It was actually the third incident of something that's happened. The first one happened when he was up in the kitchen one day. He was clicking on something, and I happened to be in the kitchen. I looked over the counter. I said, don't do that. That's malware. What made you click this link, even though you had been made aware not to click links that you weren't familiar with because it may cause issues with your Internet service? Well, I'm not very computer savvy. and Well, we can tell that. Uh, but don't feel bad because I'm not either. What did you say? You went up to Ms. Pierce and said, I clicked on something, and now it's blank. No, I, I thought, well, I'm just going to leave this alone, go to bed, and revisit it in the morning. So you didn't say anything? I didn't say anything, but then the next morning I woke up and I heard a lot of angry voices upstairs, and it was all due to the fact that I, what I did downloaded malware. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. Promotional consideration provided by... You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. So the question of this case, it boils down to is, Mr. Butler, were you negligent and were you responsible, right? Because you're saying at the end of the day, Ms. Pierce, because the computer went out, you suffered damages, you say loss of pay. I did. Mr. Butler, you decided to click on something that you thought was from a friend, and I realize these pop-ups and these all of these things can look very tricky. However, you have to understand when you're sharing something that what you do directly affects another person. I don't think the mistake was malicious, and I do not think that you had any idea that what you would do would cause harm. It's the determination of this court that the judgment will be for the plaintiff for $270, which is half of the cost of the wages that she lost. Are we clear? Yes, Your Honor. Good luck to you. Court is adjourned. Thank you. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $270. I think that the judgment was fair. I, I, I do think she was a little easy on Mr. Butler because this is a habit. Mr. Butler? I think, I think it was totally fair. I'm, I'm happy with the, with the results. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.